Hello, I'm Matt Wilson, and I'm an intern here with the Simulation Go-To-Market team. In today's Simulation in Action, we're going to be taking a look at how to simplify your Revit components for Simulation CFD. Now, as you may or may not know, Revit components often provide too much detail. As seen in this example of a window here, the frame, the trim, and the mullions in the window component are too complex for our simulation environment. This complexity often leads to meshing problems and longer solve times. In today's video, we're going to look at how to simplify your Revit component geometry, how to use Revit's three levels of detail modes, and how to substitute your own geometry for Revit components. So let's begin now. Okay, so now that we have Revit open, uh, you can see that I've created just a simple uh, little room here for us. And we're going to go through and learn how to simplify some of the Revit components. And we're going to do an example with a window. So I'm going to go into my level one floor plan, then go up and add a window and place one uh, into the wall. Go back to our 3D view. And here you can see that the Revit components come in with a lot of detail. And this is not really what we want for Sim CFD, as this is going to give us a lot of meshing problems. And we don't really need to see the, the wood trim around all the window uh, for our simulation purposes. And the way we're going to do this kind of relies on the bottom little icon here, the detail level. So there's three levels of detail, coarse, medium, and fine. And if you go to any of them, you'll see that there's not really any difference for them. The Revit components right now are not set up to show any real difference in the 3D view uh, between uh, these three levels of detail. Um, so that's what we're going to fix uh, to begin with. So if you click on the window itself and then go up here and click Edit Family, this will bring up the window itself, uh, the .rfa file that you can edit. And in the RFA file, you have the option of editing the glass, the frame, and all the trim uh, in any component, for that matter. So what we're going to do is go to our 3D view and select all of the extra detail that we don't want to show up in our simulation. So select all of it. And once you have all of that selected over in the properties browser here, you can go down to the graphics and visibility and graphics overrides and click edit. And it brings up the family element visibility settings. Uh, in this little panel, you can change where you want this geometry to show up in, in including plans and elevations or the detail levels. So we don't want this detail to show up in a coarse view of our model. Um, so we'll just uncheck that selection and click OK. If you go back to the 3D view and change it to coarse, uh, in the family editor, it's only just going to gray it out. So you can't really be sure. But if you change it to medium, you'll see the black outlines uh, come back. So that's a good indicator. So we're just going to load this back into our project and overwrite the existing version. And there you go. In our project with a little room uh, and our course setting, the detail itself is gone, but the, the window data is still there, and it's making this uh, rectangular opening inside of our wall. So the next step is going to be to create a simple box that fits into this opening that will represent just the glass uh, for when we uh, export this model into simulation CFD. So again, if you select the window and go back into the edit family, we are going to go to our elevation. Exterior is fine. And you can see that I've hid some of these elements, but there they are. Um, so again, same thing. Hide the different elements that you don't want to see, including all the, the frames. Okay, so there we just have our opening. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a simple extrusion that will snap to all these different instances. So when you choose this window, you have the option of choosing a different size. And we want to make sure that the new window that we create, uh, the simple glass will fit into any size in case we want to change it in the future. So if we go in our project browser to our floor plans, floor line, and scroll in, you can see there's a reference plane where this window is being drawn through and it's called closure. So we go back to our exterior elevation, 
we want to set our work plane to closure. Click OK. And click extrusion. And then select the rectangle command. And here's where it's important to snap to these corners that are defined by this, these reference lines. And this will help determine that uh, whenever we change our window instance, it coordinates with the height and the width. So just snap to both of these corners. And then over in the properties panel, say our extrusion, we want it to be two inches thick. Click apply and then accept. So there we have it, there's our extrusion. And we can go into our 3D view. And if we hide some of these, frames, we can see that all that we should have left is just the extrusion that we just created. So select the extrusion and then come over to the properties panel. And first thing we should do is change the material. So we want this material to act as glass. So we'll just select glass and click OK. This will ensure that this extrusion geometry, when you export it into simulation CFD, it comes in with the name glass in there. So if you have any rules set up to automatically handle material properties, those uh, should still work with this new geometry. And the other thing we want to do is, again, selecting our extrusion, go to the same visibility and graphics override in our properties panel, and uncheck all of these. We don't want this to show up in any of our two-dimensional two drawings, and we don't want it to show up in the medium or fine categories. So click OK, and then load this back into our project and overwrite the existing version. So if we change our detail setting back to course, we should see that all we have is a simplified window that's just a box. And this is perfect for simulation. To check if our par parameters worked out, we can go in and change the different levels, uh, different sizes in our properties panel. So, and if we've done everything right, that extrusion should snap and fit in snug to all those different sizes that uh, of the fixed window variety. It looks like everything's okay. So we can just go to our add-ins tab and launch our active model. And just launch. Okay, now that we're in Sim CFD, we can spin around and look at our window that we've created. And it looks to be just perfect, sitting there nice and snug. So none of the extra detail that would come in with the frame and the trim, none of that uh, extra geometry that we don't really want is here. So we can do a quick mesh sizing just to show you. Auto size, and there you go. And you can see, you can imagine if we had all those different separate pieces, this window, just one window would be a simple mess. So this will be particularly helpful if you have a large array of windows. Um, and all you need is just the glass elements that come in with that. And this technique can be applied really to any uh, type of component for that matter. If you have something like a door with a handle that might uh, make your meshing a little bit weird or uh, make your solve time a lot longer. So you can just use the same steps and go in and just replace it with a simple box. And that would take care of a lot of the, the meshing headaches that seem to trouble everyone when they come in from Revit. And there you go. So those are the simple steps you can use to make your Revit components simplified. And that concludes this episode's tutorial. Thanks for watching.